Hi everyone, if you're clicking on this video, you're probably looking at either wanting to attempt to install a PRL kit into your car, um, or you're, you're in the process, have hit a road bump, something has gone awry, you have questions, hopefully this video will, will answer some of your questions. So I am going to go out on a limb, I'm going to do a little preamble, I'm not going to try to get negative, I know that 99.9% .9 of the people on, on YouTube and people doing this stuff and all the car enthusiasts and all the, the HN Honda lovers out there, you guys are great people and I love you all. Uh, love seeing you guys at meets, love waving at you down, down the road. This is for the 0.1% that isn't like that. So if you're watching this video, this is the way that I put the, the kit in. I'm not responsible whatsoever. If any, if you do exactly what I did and your car blows up, I'm not responsible. You install a kit at your own risk. Uh, on top of that, if I say anything to offend anybody, I'm, I'm sorry. That's that's not my intention. I'm not trying to offend every anybody. I'll give you some example. I call Dykes Dykes. So I, I call Angle Side Cutter or whatever they are. I call them Dykes. That's what I grew up. I don't mean to offend anybody. Uh, midget wrenches, I call them midget wrenches instead of short little stubby wrenches or, or anything else. I think if you have that mindset, anything that I say about a short wrench will be offensive. Oh, you called it short. Oh, you called it stubby. Oh, you called it a midget wrench. So if I say anything to offend you, I'm sorry. Uh, if you're watching that video and you just find yourself going, oh, I'm so offended. Oh, I'm so offended now. Just, just close it. Uh, this video isn't for you. All right, with that out of the way, uh, for the rest of y'all, the 99%. So I, I want to do a quick, quick preamble. Uh, obviously, the kit is already in the car. It's, it's completely in. I've driven on it uh, a couple times. I'm only on my second tune. You'll see that Grady sticker right down there. Sorry. That's what was on the car. That's what came out of the car. Uh, I have a whole video on comparing the two kits and talking about that. So make sure that if, if you're wanting to see the difference between this kit and the Gretty kit, if that's a purchase that you're making, make sure you watch that video. So overall, what I overall think about this kit, um, it's, it's a very well-made kit. It is very tight. That, that's nothing against PRL, but man, is it a pain. The, the intercooler piping is an absolute pain to get in. I can show you right here the fitment of my bumper is not perfect up on this driver's side front. It is not perfect. Um, not the way I like to do business, but I can tell you right now that intercooler piping is hitting the fog lamp. So if you want to keep your fog lights and either you got to do some cutting, uh, next time I have the bumper off, I'll I'll maybe look at do some doing some uh, modification to the bracket in order to to help it fit better. I will say that installing this kit, I tried to keep everything that's stock to the vehicle, I tried to keep it the way it is. So if you see something that can be done better if I would have just cut or grind or anything like that, I tried not to do that. With that being said, there's two places that I just couldn't. There's a bracket on the steering rack that holds a bunch of wires that just came up and I, I could not get that bracket on the steering rack back on with the down pipe there the way it's bent um, also the bracket for there's a little nub bracket that sticks off the battery tray I wasn't using it anyway it was scratching up the intercooler piping it was just being a pain so I took the the battery uh, tray out and I cut that off that's at the end of the video if you want to see that anyway uh, overall what I think about the kit you saw everything that came in if you haven't seen the previous video I did not really an unboxing video, but kind of what came in the box. I also did a comparison with this kit and the Gretty kit, so there are two other videos out there. Um, I also kind of talked about what you want to buy um, in addition to this kit. I'll go into that a little bit more. So I will say that this kit, it, it's a very good kit. I think if you're just looking to get boost in your car and that's it, you can probably do it with what comes with the kit as long as you buy everything like the injector and the flash pro and all that with that being said there's quite a few things that i highly suggest that you do like if you if you put this this in with the stock tur or the stock clutch you put this turbo kit in with a stock clutch you're 
your clutch isn't going to last long. I have an Exeti Stage 2, and I'm not even confident with that clutch. It's a, a three-puck design, Exeti. They way underrate their clutches, so I'm hoping for the best, fingers crossed. Uh, something that doesn't come with the kit, the boost controller, the fuel pump that I have in the car, uh, engine mounts. So I have upgraded engine mounts. Um, I have a, a one-inch drop hose from Hybrid Racing. Great guys. If you guys haven't ordered anything from Hybrid Racing, I know they're, they're a little bit on the expensive side, but great, absolute great guy to deal with. I gave them a call. They've they sent me the air freshener, the Awesome Sauce air fresheners, just because I give them a call. Uh, so anyway, off on a tangent. Um, overall, the kit comes with the the minimum of everything that you need. I will say I got lucky because if you haven't watched the video, I had a Gretty kit in this in this car, and with the Gretty kit, I had already bought all of this wrapping and steel zip ties and and this this wrapping is an adhesive wrapping, not like the gold one that comes in the PRL kit. You might be able to use that. Uh, I think you're going to run out very quickly, but that wrapping back there, I highly, highly suggest that you set a couple hundred dollars aside and just buy the heck out of the wrapping. Um, I don't know if I still have any, and my garage is a mess. I'll pause the video real quick, throw some wrapping up there so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Poof. Magic. So I'm back. Alright, so this is what comes with the kit this big sheet it's pretty thick it's it's really good quality i will say that but it is thick you do have to cut it in strips if you want to try to wrap anything and once you start wrapping you'll see with how thick it is it doesn't like to wrap really well this is the tape that comes with the kit i don't i don't know how well this works prl might say oh man that, that's the best on the market i'd believe them because i don't know but you can see that thickness it's it's thinner than duct tape so I don't and you only get one roll of that that's still pretty thick I don't know how well that's all gonna work out um, I suggest that you buy some things like this so this is thicker this is thicker is it's the aluminum type stuff um, with a little bit of excuse me with a little bit of uh, can't think fiberglass in between it I highly suggest you buy some of this maybe even in different widths I think this is a an inch it's adhesive it will save all kinds of time heartache headache and wrapping the stuff back there I also suggest you buy some of these so this is just a sheath it's hollow on the inside so some of the some of the different hoses and stuff you can just slide this over it it protects it from heat and it also has an air barrier in between that helps it cool off so that's that's definitely beneficial i'll give you an example that stuff right there that is exactly what i have on the oil feed line it's just so much easier than trying to wrap that that thin little line that i want to stay flexible uh it's so much easier just to slide it into a casing like that and put it on now hit this stuff is not cheap if you've if you've priced any of this stuff, any of this wrapping, uh, it's not cheap at all. Just this, just this right here, that's $15. So it adds up very quickly. Pause the video, clear this off. Okay, so that goes into the wrapping. I'm, I'm done with that. I'm off of my soapbox on that. As far as anything else that, that you want or need, um, it's hit or miss. So you know, while taking off the, the other manifold, one of my studs came out of the head and the nut was just seized on that stud. Luckily I have an ace nearby. They had the stud. I went down and bought that, bought, bought the, the nuts and the bolts. I mean, I, I took quite a few nuts and bolts down there. Just, just buying studs and not nuts and bolts and stuff like that. It cost me $30 getting out of, uh, ace hardware. Um, directly from there, went to the auto parts store, spent, Another 30 bucks on a manifold gasket, on RTV, on a, a plug for the exhaust. You'll see that later on in the video. So what I'm trying to get to on this is don't, don't have this, buying this kit, don't let that be your last dollar. 
uh, you will be very disappointed when you go to put it on and you're having to scrape change and, and go to the auto parts store and, and try to scrounge up money to buy uh, little things here and there. Uh, that that map sensor, sorry, that's another thing. I don't know. I think PRL had had an option for that on the site, but all that stuff is stuff that you need. If If I had to guess... On top of what you can buy from PRL, this kit to do it right is probably going to cost you another thousand ish, two thousand, somewhere around there. In order to do the tuning, I mean, my tune, when, my e tune, 350 bucks, that's right there. A clutch, that's going to be another 300 to 400, depending on what you get. And that's on the low end. Um, so it starts adding up really quick. Well, I do have to say that PRL does offer a clutch. So, Scratch that, but um, there's a lot more cost to it than just buying the kit, throwing it on, and, and hoping that, that you can be boosted the next day. Uh, speaking of the next day, I'm not, I'm not a certified mechanic. I've been turning wrenches for a very long time. I turned wrenches for a couple different jobs. Um, I think I have all in, included, all added up. I have about 12 to 14 years of experience turning wrenches. With that being said, uh, scale of 1 to 10, 1 being I changed my own oil, 10 being I am a certified a, ASC certified technician that works on cars all day. I would give this kit right around a 6 ish, 6, maybe even into the 7. You do have to know the concepts of, of turboed vehicles. You have to know what you're doing and why you're doing it. So if you know how everything works and you just kind of lack the experience on on actually getting under the car and, and turning the wrenches then you should be fine if anywhere throughout the video you're like oh this guy's an idiot or I can't believe he said that or he called that wrong or uh, he, he doesn't know his his rear end from a hole in the ground uh, then you probably got this so if if you're looking at this and thinking that I have no idea what I'm doing then you probably got this uh, you'll you'll probably be fine I will say that I, I worked on this off and on a little bit it's been on jack stands sitting in my garage for a week. With that being said, uh, three of the days I had to work and I didn't touch it. One day I was waiting almost all day. The UPS man decided to wait until eight o'clock at night to come and bring me some, some transmission fluid from Amsoil. Uh, and I wanted to put that in before I put the subframe back on the car. Then once I'm putting subframe back in, I, I ran into some problems. So, I say all inclusive work in from a good time in the morning until I don't know like nine o'clock at night, so twelve hour days. It'll probably take it probably took me uh four days to put it on. So it's definitely not a weekend project. So have another vehicle to get to and from work or have a ride or something. Uh I think I rambled off long enough. Uh please watch the video. If you if you see anything that I did drastically wrong, please let me know. I, like I said, I'm, I'm not working down at the Honda dealership installing turbo every day. So uh, this was done in my garage with simple, simple tools. I will say having a wide assortment of wrenches, different lengths, um, and sockets, different lengths, deep and shallow, both quarter inch and half inch drive, definitely helped me out. Uh, I did use a die grinder twice, so I have a compressor, I have a die grinder. If if you don't have that, you're going to have to find some way to cut some metal. One isn't terribly necessary, although I suggested on the battery tray the, the bracket for the the steering rack. I, I don't see any way of doing it. If you found a way, good on you. Let me know. Post up a video in the com or a link to your video in the comments. Let me know. Because I'll, I'll go rebuy that bracket from Honda right now and put everything back the way it was. But I couldn't find a way of doing it. So it took me about four days. Um, if, if you've changed the clutch, if you've gone pretty, pretty in-depth, if you've ripped out the, the um, subframe, if you've done all that, then this shouldn't be too bad for you. It's a pain. Take your time. Take your time. Uh, don't get frustrated with it. Just take your time. If you find yourself getting frustrated, walk away and come back to it. That's what I did. It, it helped me out a lot. If you're second guessing yourself and you're not sure if you're going to be able to get this kit in, then you might want to pay to have somebody do it. I will say paying somebody to have 
to to do it go with somebody pay the extra money go with somebody that cares there's there's too many people out there that are just they rush everything they just throw stuff together and then the consumer is the one that has to deal with it if that battery cable if i didn't take the time to reroute that if <clears throat> you'll see in the video at the end um i mean there's there's a magnitude of things that that can go wrong with this if you don't take your time and you don't do it right and you don't actually look at what you're doing so if you're gonna pay somebody pay the extra money go to somebody that you really trust somebody that's been in business somebody that that has worked on either your car or, or your friend cars or you've read all these awesome reviews on because it it is a pain I did have to take things back apart many times I mocked everything up and then took it back apart to make sure that I had the fitment right it is a pain well I'm at 15 minutes just talking about the end so I'll end it there guys uh, give me a like if 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 you find something in that video that helped you in any way shape or form please give me a like throw it in the comment I say it at the end but I didn't do this for me I didn't do this so I could show everybody Ooh, I, I have a PRL turbo kit that's not who I am that's not what I'm about I did this 100% for the car community uh, this isn't a step-by-step how-to. This is just me documenting some of the things that I ran into, showing what I did, showing different steps along the way. This video is 100% uncut, unedited. All I did was take a whole bunch of little videos, one-take videos. I, I didn't go back and retake them. Um, and I just threw them all together. So it's going to be extremely long, and you're going to have to sort through it to find what you're looking for. But if you're really interested in doing this and you need some help, then it's well worth your time. I couldn't find anything like this online. I couldn't, I couldn't find any help. Uh, went through PRL. They they said that they didn't have an install video or an install any type of install documentation. They said to go online and try to find what I can online, looking up pictures or whatever. And that's that's kind of what I did everything off of. Uh, so I decided to make this video in order to help out the car community and that's it So if you have if you if you want to be nitpicky and you want to nitpick my video to death Please just just click off of it and watch something else waste your time on YouTube doing something else But if this video helps you in any way shape or form give me a like give me a comment um, Let me know what your guys build is let me know how it helped you Let me know if you ran into any issue that I didn't cover let me know in the comments and then uh, anybody that is watching that video and you've watched it and you're like, hey, he didn't go over this, look in the comments. Hopefully somebody else, the, the great people of the HM world, has uh, made a comment about it or put a link to their video. Let's get this up and running because there, there's hardly anything out there for PRL and there's a lot of people wanting to buy this kit and put it in. So I hope this, this really helps you guys. Um, I'm, I, I've been in contact with PRL through the entire purchase buying uh, and everything with this kit. I got to say their customer service is spot on every time I call or every time I email them. Uh, I'm dealing with Spencer directly. That's, that's his name over at PRL. Great guy. Uh, I buy from them at any time. And uh, I'm all in all, besides the tight fit, which PRL can't, can't help besides my, my bumper popped out a little bit and some, some other things you'll see in the video with some of the fitment or some of the how close it is to everything, which they, they can't help. I understand that. PRL can't help. Uh, they're, they're trying to cram all of this stuff in big, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, big things into this already tight engine bay. I mean, look at, the, look at where they had to place the filter. So to get that filter off, I'm going to have to remove the battery, at least pull the... the silicone coupler right there and move that piping out of the way hopefully enough to get that filter out i mean they they did everything that they could to not have anything underneath the engine which i appreciate from the gritty kit they had piping underneath the engine not the best way to do business so they put everything up top but it's it's a bear and once you start getting everything in there it gets tighter and tighter and tighter so Thanks, guys. Enjoy the video. I hope it helps somebody. And like I said a million times, if it does, give it a like. Post a comment. Let's, let's get some info out there on this kit to the community to help others. Here's the video. Thanks.
I'm back. So for the install video, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a bunch of small little videos and then try to get on the computer and just combine them all. So forgive me if it doesn't turn out that great. But starting with the intercooler. So I believe the bolts, the ones all the way to the right, those are to mount the intercooler. The bar is pretty self-explanatory. I had to get different bolts because the Grady kit it didn't have all the bolts. But bar sits and hangs really nice. Uh, the there's little clips right there where the bar can hang off of, and all the holes lined up perfect. So no issues so far. So I think I found uh, figured out what this little bracket's for. I had no idea. I got with PRL. I think uh, Spencer said that it was for the intake air temperature sensor. Maybe I misread it. That could be completely my fault, but I'm pretty sure you go off to this bracket right here. So this bracket, this is a sensor for your outside air temperature on your gauges. And if you see right there, there's not going to be clearance for that intercooler to come up and sit right there. So I'm guessing that bracket relocates it. I'm going to give it a try. As you can see, I didn't use this bracket for that. Still not sure what that bracket goes to. If it does go to the outside air temperature sensor for your gauges, then uh, I'm not going to use it. All I did was just turn that vertically. There's plenty of slack in the wire. So I just turned, instead of going horizontal across, I just turned it vertical. It'll get a good enough reading off of that. So if that bracket is for that, I'm not going to use it. If it's not, I still have no idea what it's for. So I'm still at the sensor. What was happening, I had it mounted vertically, but it was hitting the intercooler piping when I'm trying to put on the inter intercooler piping. So I went back and forth with the bracket, not sure, still not sure if that's what that bracket is for, but I determined that I'm going to still go vertically with a cant to the side like so. But in order to do that, because I'm perfect square in there, you have to bend down that little tab right there. So I bent down that tab, uh, if this bracket is for this purpose, you'd have to bend down that tab anyway. So this is, I think I'm still going to go without the bracket. So it looks like that worked fine. Just bending that bracket a little bit and mounting it vertically. There's enough clearance that's already bolted up. So two rubber grommets that come in the packing. They're like a rubber grommet with a stud. This is what they're for, I'm guessing for the bracketry for the intercooler piping, just to let it have some flex. So let's talk about the T-clamps. So there's one, and only one in this kit that is just slightly larger than the others. So of course you got your big rings for your filter. Those are all self-explanatory. Uh, you have a really small one right here. You have a really small one for where it necks down on the elbow that goes into the turbo. So that one was easy to figure out with this. This one that just barely is slightly larger, maybe a quarter of an inch. That's coming out well. Quarter of an inch. So what I'm going to do with that one is I'm going to put it on the other end of this. Um, I'm guessing maybe where it flares out, it might be just a little bit bigger diameter, so they gave you a little bit bigger one. Um, all the other ones, I'm just gonna use for all the different couplers throughout the intercooler piping. That's the only thing that I can think of, is that it would be part of this, this junction, or this elbow, because it gets a little bit thicker. So here's an update on the intercooler piping. I just want to say that this intercooler piping is an absolute, part of my language, bitch. I've spent about two hours trying to figure out if the pipe off the top comes around, pulls up to right there. You can see the stress on that already. You can see that this isn't perfectly lined up. There's a bulge in it. but. All the picture that I could find from PRL or anybody on the internet, this pipe right here goes up to the throttle body. And I'll show you why it's all wonky. So let's go up to the top. So you're having to come in. Yeah, see that? It's all scratched up already. 
So you come up underneath the battery tray and it goes into the throttle body right here. Now, this bottom edge, you can't see it here. This is the short end, this is the long end. And on all of PRL's photos, the short end is up on top. There's absolutely no way for this to go on with a short end up on top. And I will say, they could have bent it a little bit different and made this a little bit longer so it doesn't rest against the coolant line. Doesn't matter if I'm using the stock coolant lines or the hybrid racing one inch drop coolant line, it still rubs. Now the one inch drop coolant line, it rubs less. So that's what I'm gonna go with, but it does rub. So this was an absolute pain to try to get into here. Uh, you know, you can get it snaked in all right, but trying to figure out how, how it lines up if it's the actual top piping coming off of the intercooler that goes into the throttle body, um, getting around the, the clutch cable. So I already had a steel braided line, so I didn't have to use theirs. But it's, a, it's the exact same section. I'm trying to see down in here if we can actually see it. So right now it's not rubbing on anything besides the coolant line, which is good. So I think this is the actual correct way. So as far as your piping is concerned, you got the elbow up here. The short end for me went on the bottom. Uh, it makes sense because PRL is facing out. They're probably going to want everybody to see who makes this. So PRL facing out, but the short end did go down. Not like the picture that I saw um, that had the short end to the top. But that is the best that I could get it and still have it meet up. So there's a lot of pressure on this. Rubber grommet, I don't see that lasting. And it's hard to tell, but the pipes don't line up perfectly. I know that's what the coupler are there for, but the closer you get it, the less bulge you have. I will say that this bottom pipe absolutely easy to put in so the bottom pipe really simple to put in I have aftermarket mounts so I have this little bracket that came with my aftermarket mount I believe the the rubber coupler that same exact thing what's right here they supplied two of them uh, I believe they wanted you to use it up here but with the way that mine is with the uh, I don't have the stock mounts anymore. This bolted directly to it. I know that's going to give some vibration, but that's my only choice. Because that piece of rubber is about half an inch long to an inch long. And if I do that, then it sits too high. So we'll see. I'll keep going. If, uh, if I can put that, that piece of rubber in there, great. If not, then, then it's going to be hard mounted on. It looks like from back here... I'm guessing that the intercooler piping go high and if you can see there's the flange and the intercooler piping above the flange so what I'm guessing I'm gonna have to do I thought the intercooler piping would come behind the turbo and then it would pretty much 90 degree in almost flat like this but I think what I'm gonna have to do I actually clock the turbo so the turbo is facing up and this is facing down and then this bolts just like that to the intercooler piping. If I grab my turbo, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I thought it would mount up pretty much just like this, uh, where the flange is, and then this going towards the rear of the car, that 90 degree coming in and going right in. But I think what I'm gonna have to do, I'm clock this to where it's vertical. And then it's going to come off of the intercooler piping and down. So I have the turbo mocked up into place. And it looks like I'm right. You have to clock the turbo to not, not straight vertically, but to an up position. And that, I'm a little worried about how close. I mean, I can fit my finger in there, in between there. But I'm a little worried how close that silicone is to the header pipe
But it looks like that's the way it's supposed to be routed. You know, all the picture that I see online, this this pipe with the uh, blow valve goes right over top of this is where the intake will go. So go right over top of everything. I'm pretty sure that's correct. This is having a little bit of problem lining up a little bit. Uh, that's having a little bit of problem lining up, but I'll fine tune it and get it in there. So what I ended up doing with the turbo, uh, I loosened the bolt just a little bit to clock it, and then I went ahead and mounted it. Um, just soft mounted it, you know, just put three of the bolts in, uh, snugged them down, no RTV or anything. And what I'm going to try to do is fine tune where I want the, the turbo to be, and then I'm going to tighten up from underneath. I'm going to tighten up just a couple of the bolts, take the turbo back down, and then tighten up the rest of them. But I'm going to get everything mocked up into place first because after I put the the red RTV, the high heat RTV onto that turbo, I don't want to have to mount it and then unmount it because it wasn't clocked properly. So I'm going to mock everything up and then take it all back down. Okay, so I got underneath the car and I clocked the turbo towards the rear of the car a little bit more. And as you can see, that actually gave me quite a bit more room. Now I can fit my hand back here. So that's going to help with some of the heat coming off of that pipe. It did put a little bit of an angle on this piping, as you can see from there. But I'd rather it be a little bit angled back than be too close to that tube. So what I'm probably going to do, uh, I know it's rubber, but I'm probably going to put some of that heat shroud that PRL uh, supplied with the kit on this just to try to keep even more of the heat off of it. I have a sneaky suspicion that these have been burnt in the past. So if you get it too close to the pipe or if too much heat comes off of any of the tubes, um, then I'm guessing that it can melt it. I know silicone is pretty, pretty durable, but I don't want to test that. So it looks like I got that. Uh, I went underneath after after I saw this, and I was happy with the placement. I went underneath. I'm able to get to four of the bolts for the turbo after uh, clocking it. Um, so I was able to get to four of the bolts and snug all those up. Now I think I will make sure that everything else isn't going to fit. The, I think you can see it from up here. I did notice back here, they're brake lines. So that tube come in, comes pretty close to that brake line. I'm fortunate that all these have already been wrapped previously because of the, the Gretty kit that I had on here. Um, but I might end up putting some more on that. Not really sure, it, it's pretty close. And I don't want to boil my brake fluid before it even goes down to the rotor, so we'll see how that goes. I do have this heat shield from the Gretty kit. I do wish that I had a heat shield portion for this. That would probably help out a lot. Sorry, I didn't have the camera on it. I wish I had a heat shield portion for this. That would help out a lot, but it is what it is. There is air gap in between, so maybe we'll stay cool enough. Leaned on that. So it looks like that's just going to be hard mounted instead of the rubber. So I got everything mocked up. I had the turbo clocked where I wanted it to. I still need to, to run the oil line to see where I want the fitting facing on that. But the intake is kind of a pain to get down in there. You have to go, I'm guessing, underneath the shifter cables because over top would just put too much strain on them. Uh, it is a big intake to get down in there, but it does fit. If you work with it, just be patient. Uh, just got done wiring up the intake air temperature. So here's a stock sensor off of the car that went into the mass airflow sensor which obviously is pointless now. Uh, so what you want to do 
and this isn't my idea that I didn't learn this I, I went on well I didn't this isn't from me uh, I went on to 8th Gen Civic years ago and somebody did a great how-to and showed exactly what wires to use and exactly what to do so this time I had spliced it into there with the last into uh, intake air temperature off of the Gretty kit but it was just too much of a pain to get the solder try to get the solder off and the wires unwound so I just twisted the wire together soldered yes I'm still using solder I know it's an engine bay I know it gets hot but it doesn't get that hot so twisted them together and then soldered it down I'm gonna put the heat shrink over if you care it doesn't matter the red or the black it doesn't matter because it go into the sensor and then it gets a signal back and that's how it knows what the intake air temperature is so it doesn't matter if that signal comes down this wire and returns on the the red or comes down the red and returns on the black that doesn't matter what does matter is right here it's the red and yellow and the green and black for reference where they are on the connector they're right on the end don't don't use the red and black it's the red and yellow all the way at the end and then the green green and black so get that wired in and then I think I've got everything mocked up so I'm gonna actually tear it all back apart and then start permanently mounting things there we go got it all wrapped up I use a lot of electrical tape the goal isn't to make it look pretty, it's to protect the connector and the wires inside. So that's the intake air temperature sensor wired in. So that will go there. All right, back to it. A couple quick updates. So that bigger hose clamp that I talked about, I ended up using it on the throttle body, not on the elbow that goes to the turbo. Uh, I did try to configure this in a bunch of different ways. Tried taking this off and putting a little rubber grommet underneath it. It sat way too high. And as you can see down here, it's very close anyway. It's already scraping and, and messing it up. Very close to where the battery tray is anyway. So with that rubber grommet, it was it was touching. So no matter what I did, this is a close. This is the best that I could get this away from here. As you can see, I've hit it a couple times and scratched it up. It's it's pretty close. I can fit maybe my fingernail portion of my finger underneath that, but that's the best that I could get it. I'll show you. So if we come down here, you can see that even even with the how far I was able to get it, this is still, if I push this up to where it's almost in line, then it'll definitely hit. It'll hit something up there. Additionally, back behind, see the sensor for the transmission? So putting that up on that rubber grommet, made it rest against that sensor and made it rest against the battery tray so i decided just to take out the the rubber grommet it's close hopefully it doesn't rub i'll jump underneath show you what i've done underneath i think that's just about it for up here so a couple changes i had to make i wanted to put my wideband up front and then the O2 sensor for the car in the back. That couldn't happen because of a couple reasons. Number one, this cable isn't long enough to reach all the way up into the stock mounting location. I really don't want to take it off of its mounting bracket. And this for the wide band, the O2 sensor for the wide band, the, the body of it is longer and it rests up on the shifter cables. So I had to switch them up. The white band's going to be all the way at the back. I did find a bung. If anybody cares, I just used a, uh, a normal oil drain plug. It's 18 millimeter by 1.5 threads. So if you need to plug one of those up, that's what it is. So looking up in here. It 
So as you can see, there's not a lot of room at all. It's it's going to be a chore to try to get this exhaust in there and the the band actually on it. With the drain hose, uh, I haven't figured out how I'm going to route it yet. So I try to scoop back. So I have tape on it. You can see the blue tape right there. So the drain hose goes from there down to there. If I go in front of the steering rack, it puts in front, toward the front of the car, it puts a, a really bad kink in the line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait. Uh, I, I don't take the steering rack out. I should have said that. I don't take the steering rack out of the car when I take the subframe off. I just use bungee cords. So I unbolt everything from the subframe, and then I use bungee cords to hold it up. It's a lot easier for me than trying to mess with the steering wheel and the steering shaft. So this the steering rack's a little bit higher than it will be once it's bolted back down to the subframe. Um, I'm going to mess with that after probably after I get the subframe in to see if I need to come back towards the rear of the car around and underneath the subframe or if once the steering rack's bolted back into place if it takes that kink out of the line. I will say that... The wastegate was an absolute pain. Um, trying to get it mocked up. So let me try to get a good angle. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the video or pause the video. Um, I'm gonna try to get a good angle, get this exhaust pipe out of the way, so I can show you what I've done. So it's really difficult to get a good angle because this my phone zooms in a little bit when it starts recording, and it's tight down here as it is. But hopefully, so that's the rear of the car, that's the back of the car, so hopefully this gives you some reference on how I routed this. No idea, I had to put the wastegate up there twice, the exhaust up uh, without bolting it on, just to try to test fit it. Uh, I do have, I don't know, about a half inch gap, one inch gap-ish, between that dump tube and the car all the way down. So it's not hitting the car. Comes right out the bottom right there. Now, I will say, if anybody knows anybody that works at Precision Turbo, uh, or if anybody from Precision Turbo is watching this, which I doubt, stop trying to save money or whatever reason that you made the bolt so damn short for the the band clamp. The I put channel locks up there, and squished them together as hard as I possibly could and that bolt maybe got one thread maybe two before uh, before it started having a lot of tension on it so we'll just have to wait to see that that top one didn't go in well at all the one coming right off the manifold did not go in well at all um, just cranked it down I'm gonna hope for the best if not then I'm gonna have to order another one but man if uh, if you want to save yourself some pain Go to the hardware store and buy buy a bolt that's maybe, I don't know, a quarter inch longer so you can get some threads. I mean, you can see, I can't get the camera up there, but I after mocking it all up, I actually took it down and then put the dump tube on and, and tightened it down with it off the car. And even with that tightened down as tight as you can get it, the, the bolt's not even coming out of the nut. It's supposed to be a lock nut, you know? It's, it's not even coming out of there. So... Uh, if if you want, go down to local hardware store, pick yourself up uh, a bolt that's about a quarter inch longer. But yeah, those uh, those are an absolute pain. Um, I I put up my my exhaust. We'll see how this goes. It's it's not quite the length that I'm hoping for. So when I had the Gretty kit, I had a custom three inch downpipe made, and I had them weld this section, that the little section from full race that they give you for either uh, an FG2 will be a little bit shorter than an FA5, but the little section that goes from there that bolts up to the flange and they go right into the exhaust and there's supposed to be a clamp. Well, it popped out twice driving down the road, so I got pissed off and had somebody weld it up. Well, now it's not lining up perfectly. Uh, it's a little bit short, and the 
the clocking of it, I guess you could call it, the clocking of it is, I think, maybe half an inch off. So I'm going to have to see about cutting the weld, so wish me luck on that. But yeah, I think that covers everything underneath here. This is how, if I can get far enough away. So my coolant lines go up and around. Um, to bolt the turbo up, I didn't put this coolant fitting in. Because without this coolant fitting right here, you can actually use a an extension in a socket and get up to the bolt for the fourth bolt for the turbo um, but putting the fitting back on is easy you can use a socket for that I had already connected the line in hindsight I would not have uh, but I can't get a, a box wrench in there to really torque this down I think I have it tight enough I mean no matter how hard I pull on this the it doesn't move so I think it's tightened down good but if not then I'm gonna have to take this line off um, put the box end of the wrench down around it, try to get it a little bit more snug, then put the line back on the fitting. I will pause the video and show you what I did with the coolant lines up top. So I have the 90 degree bend towards the, towards the car. I still have to tie these out of the way, but 90 degree bend on the side of the turbo towards the car. And then the 45 degree bend on the side of the turbo that's at the back. I'm going to take those up, tie them together right there where you see the gold tape, uh, tie them together, and then, then run them over the engine. And what I'm doing with that, I didn't delete the, the throttle body coolant lines. Well, let me jump pause and I'll show you. Okay, so I didn't delete the throttle body coolant lines. There are two coolant lines that go to your throttle body to help for cold starts or something like that, some emission stuff. Um, so what I did, I just ended up splicing in. You can see right here. There's one. There's one. So I just put a T-fitting right off the lines from the throttle body. And then they run back over top, over top right here, and back down to the turbo. All right, back to work. Finishing up for the day. Today was just a lot of uh, trying to get that wastegate in. There, I have a full race exhaust, and with the custom downpipe that I had built, the exhaust coupler kept popping out. The part that going from the downpipe to the actual uh, exhaust, the piece that you can change out depending on what car you have the fg2 or the fa5 from full race well it kept popping out when i had the the downpipe of the Greddy kit so i had it welded on um i asked them just to put a couple of tack welds in there just to hold it in well they welded a half circle around it so it took me a couple hours to get the weld cut and not grind through the pipes so that took a while uh the exhaust underneath is coming out okay uh, I think with without the hangers and stuff like that, there might be a little bit of pressure on it, but I think it'll be all right. So I did end up moving my boost controller. Previously, I had it tucked right here, right behind the, the brake master cylinder, wired right into the ECU. Uh, all the turbo piping and everything was on that side, so it made it easier. Well, with the waste gate being on this side, right down, can't really see it because it's too dark. Kind of make out the top of it. So with the waste gate being on this side, uh, I decided I didn't want to run vacuum line from here, from the waste gate, all the way over to the boost controller. And then because there's no reference signal off of the turbo, I just plumbed it into my vacuum block right here and I didn't want to run that all the way over to the other side of the car. So what I decided to do was just run uh, the power wire or the hot, the signal wire over to it uh, from the ECU and then I only had to run one piece of wire instead of running, running two vacuum hoses the width of the car. So what I ended up doing 
if you haven't set one of these up before, so port three right up in front, uh, port one and two, or yeah, one and two are interchangeable. This is a three port design. This is a breather. So air comes, what happens is right here. So the port three is the boost signal. So port three you wanna have hooked up to wherever you're gonna get your boost signal from, whatever boost your turbo is actually making or the boost that the car is under. Normally you go right off of where the turbo is at, but I didn't have that option, so I'm going off of the vacuum block. Hopefully it turns out okay. So port three there, I try to get close. Can't really see the numbers. So I have port one just being a vent and port two going to the wastegate. So I'll zoom out a little bit so we can see all the, the hosing. And then this, this vacuum line, I ran around the front to stay away from the heat. Um, I guess I should show you where I'm getting my boost and vacuum signal from. So I deleted the EGR. So the EGR right there. So that's the EGR valve. What I did, I just took it out. I filed down the bottom of it. Uh, there had a check ball down there with a spring. So when you file down the bottom of it, the ball pops out. You remove the string, this string, the spring, and then it is just a, a fitting pretty much. So I have that coming over and going to, uh, so from the EGR, or what used to be an EGR, I have going all the way over and then up to an oil catch can. Uh, then where the EGR used to go into the intake manifold right there that's where I'm getting my boost signal from so that goes up to from the intake manifold up to the block then off of the block like I said I have the boost controller I have the blow-off valve and then I have my for my gauge my boost gauge inside that's it. Uh, so I went around the front of the car to stay away from all the heat. I just ran it along that same line. And then once it dropped down into here, I ran it along the EGR line. And then straight up into the blow off valve. So hope that helps some people. Uh, this, I don't know if the oil catch can going to be able to stay here. It kind of looks like it might if I move this mount around a little bit. Uh, lift it up some. I used to just have the oil catch can sitting there off the battery bracket. I don't know if it's going to be able to stay there or not. Also, what I used to do is I had the the valve cover breather going into the oil catch can, and then I had the EGR going into the oil catch can. And then from the oil catch can, I had actually put a little... Uh, fitting on the bottom of the intake pipe on the old kit so it actually pulled all the fumes in and burnt them up uh, number one I guess it in kind of good for the environment but number two it kept all the smells out of the inside of the car so not really sure how I'm gonna do this uh, PRL supply just a, a breather filter for up here but I don't know if I'm gonna do that or run those two together and then put the breather filter on the catch can. Not sure yet. All right, I think that covers everything thus far. And I'll keep you guys posted and updated throughout uh, until I get it running. Welcome to the first iteration of I am a terrible mechanic. So, I had showed in an earlier video that I had mocked up the turbo and I had clocked the intake to line up with the, uh, the I don't know, compressor side, I guess, uh, of the turbo, right? So I said that, sorry for the light, I tried to put some light so everybody could see, but so I did put some uh, heat tape up there. You can see the band clamp up top. Put some heat tape around that because it's a little close to the to the manifold. I clocked that all up and, and it lined up pretty good when I actually mounted the turbo. What I didn't think of was the oil drain. So um, I never really had to clock 
the oil drain and, and the exhaust side of the turbo, everything had always lined up. I will say that this turbo is on a little bit of a cant. So the drain, the drain was at an angle kind of towards the rear of the car, maybe 10 degree angle. Um, I had saw it when I had seen it when I had gotten the turbo mounted and everything. Didn't th really think anything of it was just going to press. Got the exhaust on. Got the. I was pretty much buttoning up everything down here. Um, I had I had gotten everything on. Uh, even the O2 sensor all plugged in and zip tied up out of the way and, and everything was looking good. Uh, go to put on the oil drain like in the previous video I had shown that there was a little bit of an angle to it. I uh, really didn't think much of it that it would be fine. With the exhaust up there and the oil drain, that oil drain tube came, I don't know, within half an inch or so to the exhaust pipe because of that backwards angle. Um, it probably would have been fine, but I'm not, I'm not one to work on probably's. So I ended up ripping everything off. And if you try really hard and stay really patient, you can actually fit a wrench up in there and loosen all of the, uh, locking bolts for both the exhaust and the compressor side. I don't, I don't know the nomenclature, sorry, if it, the turbine side and the compressor side, I mean, I... So turbine side, I think, on the exhaust. So you can get to the turbine bolts and the compressor bolts. Um, it just takes some finagling. The very top one on the uh, the turbine side, um, I had to get from the top. We'll see how it tightens back down. But I got it all, all loosened up. Um, got it clocked to where it's a straight down angle. And now I'm going to tighten them all up. We'll see. Uh, I have to I had to loosen that back coolant line so now I'm kind of trying to shove my arms up in there and, and tighten that down I want to make sure I get them tight because if those start leaking I'm gonna have to take this entire subframe back off to get to them so it's a it's a process don't be like me moral story don't be like me um, make sure that everything clocked right on the mock-up I highly 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 suggest a mock-up uh, to make sure that everything right also with the mock-up, I kind of just placed the intake pipe and, and guessed. If I were to go back and do it all over again, I would actually run all the intercooler piping up front first and actually put that pipe exactly where I want it. And then uh, during the mock-up, then put everything up there, actually connect it to the turbo, uh, make sure there are no bends or kinks in it. I would tighten down a couple of bolts to lock everything in place making sure that that oil drain is to the straight down position, lock everything in place and then take the turbo out and then take that top intercooler piping off uh, to make it easier. So if I could go back and do it all over again, that's how I'd do it. Uh, I didn't, so I've effectively wasted probably about four hours of time taking all this stuff back off by the time I get it all back together. All right, well, back to it. Okay, quick update video so i got the front bumper on obviously i need to replace my fog lights those are cheap ebay ones that crack just looking at them alone when a small rock hits them so the intercooler the bumper fits on with the intercooler there pretty well uh it does rub a little bit on the bottom of the bumper and the driver side fog light does uh hit the intercooler piping just a little bit Coming up top, I decided to delete my oil catch can, just use the filter for the valve cover ventilation. And then I think, I'm not sure, I don't really remember, I think that I called this a PCV valve earlier in one of my videos. Uh, forgive me, there is lack of sleep or whatever, uh, probably too many beers while trying to turn wrenches, but that is not a PCV valve, PCV, uh, I mean, that is not an EGR valve, if I've called it an EGR valve, exhaust gas recirculation valve, that is a PCV valve, positive crankcase ventilation valve. Um, so instead of running that to an oil catch can, uh, I really, I would guess that i probably dump maybe uh, two or three tablespoons out of that oil catch can uh, every six months to a year. So really I'm just taking up space um, what I'm going to do with the PCV valve is I'm just going to run it underneath the car and let it 
just a vent atmosphere pretty much so that's an update uh, did get the exhaust all on and stuff like that I'll try to get under there to to do a quick video I mean I, I showed the exhaust I showed all that I showed the clocking that I had to reaccomplish um, but I'll jump under there and just show you a couple things all right back under the car uh, I was able to get the hose cut to the right length and the sorry the oil drain hose cut to the right length and lined up pretty well there's no kinks in it pretty happy with that um, I will say I'll try to bring it back I will say that this exhaust is a little bit far toward towards the passenger side um, it would have been a lot easier if this section of pipe right here was a little bit shorter um, the way that it fits in the tunnel is it's canted to the left a little bit and as you can see right here the uh, O2 sensor actually touches onto the shifter cables which is going to wear the rubber down on the shifter cables but uh, so it would have been a little bit better if they they shortened this long section of pipe right here but overall with the fit and finish I'm really happy with it uh, it seems like it's going to be out of the way enough I'll try to get the dump tube so the dump tube I hope I have enough space in between the car and the dump tube I actually put the dump tube almost right up against the exhaust pipe I have everything taped off the way I want it um, shouldn't be too much of a problem we'll see when I put the subframe back on if this bunch of wires is gonna need any type of heat protection or not uh, they do drop down pretty far I don't know how close they're gonna come to that pipe so the exhaust pipe so we'll see how that goes uh, nothing terribly uh, exciting or anything any big changes down here since the last time I did a video down here everything bolted up pretty well uh, was pretty easy no no big complaints and no big concerns all right gonna keep turning wrenches so here I am under the car started getting the subframe up got it bolted into place bolts are holding it and ran into this snag so this is a string rack sorry for the bright light that's a string rack this is a rubber grommet on the passenger side right here and this is a mount that goes over top of the rubber grommet well that mount has four connectors connected to it And those connectors, that mount is hitting the downpipe. So without any instruction, I don't, I don't really know what they had intended me to do with this. I think what I'm going to end up doing is trying to take off all these connectors and slide them off of that mount. I really wish I would have known about this before I put the damn subframe up in there. Because it's a pain to get up in there. And it took me about an hour to get it all in place and get it mocked up and get the bolts in. I really wish I would have known that this wasn't going to fit before I put the subframe up in there. Um, yet again, another place where instruction with the kit would have came in handy. But what I'm going to try to do, I guess, is... Sorry, big old gobby hands getting in the way. You can see it. See that weld right there? So I'm going to try to get that out of there. And then I guess I'm just going to cut that bracket. Um, I'm, I'm sure that Honda has these and uh, they're not too expensive, just a piece of metal. So I'm going to try to cut that bracket, leave this one that everything's zip tied to. Uh, I didn't realize how close that was going to be to the exhaust pipe. So I don't know if I'm going to try to get some wrapping in there, if I'm going to have to take the subframe back down. I, I really just don't know yet. but. That's obviously an issue. Uh, no way if if I loosen this downpipe and torqued it up just a little bit, it would it would come very close to the uh, tunnel up there. You can see it um, to where when the engine rocked, it'd probably hit, and there'd still be no way that that's gonna that's gonna clear. It's it's not even close. Um, yeah, so I guess. My only option is to cut that bracket and then try to zip tie 
the wires wherever I can. There's there's nothing really up in here to zip tie stuff to. Sorry, my phone likes to zoom in when it starts recording. So there's there's really nothing up in here you can zip tie anything to. And I have to keep it off of that hot exhaust. That's uh there's some really thick cable coming out of there that's for your power your electric power steering. I mean it, it's important stuff. So I'm gonna try. I'll let you know how it goes. So here's the bracket. It has a indication front is that way. So that points to the front of the car. There's a zip tie in here. I was able to crimp the bottom with uh, pliers, needle nose, and get that little zip tie out of there without messing it up. The small connector on this side. On the back of the connector right here, there's a tab that you push down and then it slides off of the bracket on both of these. On the large connectors, there's no tab. So as you can see, there's two little holes and on the actual connector itself, it has two little nubs that lock into that hole. I had the best results by taking a very small little uh, common screwdriver, shoving the common screwdriver back behind the connector to to create a gap and then pushing really hard and getting them off. So it's off the bracket, brackets out of the car. What I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna cut right here where my thumb is, right across there with a die grinder, flip it over, do the same thing on this side, cut right across here. I'm gonna leave this. It didn't seem like it went too close to the exhaust and that's where that zip tie plugs into. It'll at least give me one mounting location to zip tie everything to um and then i'm gonna try to find others i guess uh subframe still in the car i'm really gonna try to do this without removing the subframe but if i can't get my arms in there to get stuff zip tied down and and mounted up and depending on how close the connectors are to the exhaust i might have to wrap them and and in that case the the subframe got to come back out Here's the bracket where I cut it off. I just used a cutoff wheel die grinder. Uh, cut the weld on this side. So on the passenger side of the car, right side of the car. Sorry. It's dark, it's late. I was waiting on oil all day to come in for the transmission before I put the subframe back up. So, sorry, dark. But just cut the weld on this side. And then chop that piece on this side, use the die grinder to just hit up all the edges so there's no sharp edges. If the wires hit it, then it'll be all right. Uh, I don't know how far this is going to keep the wires out of the way. I'll have to get back under there and look. I might be wrapping more stuff and, uh, and zip tying stuff out of the way. So I'll let you know how it goes. Once I get back under there and once I get it all tidied up, I'll, I'll give you guys a look. What I can, I mean, it's really tight down there, so I'll give you guys a look on what can be seen with the camera. Okay, trying to hold the light and get in here at the same time. So, forgive me. Here's what I ended up doing. So, as you can see, off of that U bracket, I'm on the side of the car to be able to show you this, all right. Uh, off of that U-bracket, I left the the zip tie bracket, which actually helped. I did reach up there and bend it down quite a bit uh, just to keep it down. So the two things that I, I was worried about, number one, keeping it away from the steering rack arm, and number two, keeping it away from the CV shaft. So all the wires and connectors are right in between the two. I mean... Uh, CV shaft would obviously tear them up the most, but so would the steering rack going back and forth. So, uh, kept that original bracket, zip tied them together a bunch. And then what I ended up doing is right here on the subframe, I'm gonna have to cut those every time I drop the subframe, but hopefully that's once in a great while. So on the back of this bracket right here for the subframe, uh, I just zip tied them to that. And I can't get the camera up in there, sorry guys, but just have to kind of trust me that 
it is out of the way of, of everything. So it's out of the way of the sheep CV shafts. There's a gap there. It's not close. It's not terribly close to the exhaust. You can see the exhaust pipe right there. The top of the this wire is wrapped, but it, it's pretty far away. The bottom does have loom where it, where it is closest to the exhaust, where that bracket is. So that should be fine. There's enough air gap in between. That should be fine. But yeah, I doubled up the these zip ties. Of course, I'm going to cut those off. I'm, I'm not that guy. Um, I doubled up the zip tie just to try to make sure that it doesn't go break off of there and go into the CV shaft. I mean, that that's your power steering. That's a major harness. That would just be an absolute monster to try to replace if it got tore up or if anything happened to it. So I'm trying to protect it the best that I can without having that bracket there. The bracket was obviously the best way. That's how, how Honda designed it. Uh, but with that exhaust, you can see how close it is. There's no way that it would have fit up there. Um, and if you forced it or if you you just trimmed it and tried to keep the connectors connected to that bracket, I mean, they would be, they'd be so close to that exhaust, it would just burn them up anyway. So right now it's laying on the subframe with all the, all the other stock bracketry and then good old zip ties to hold it to the subframe. So it doesn't come in contact with the CV shafts. That was my fix. If you have a better fix, if you found a better way in doing this, uh, let me know because I'll I'll go buy that bracket. If I can use that bracket, I'll go buy a new one from Honda in a heartbeat. So let me know if you found a better way to make this work without cutting the bracket or if you found a better way to tie down those wires. Man, I'd love to hear from you guys and uh, and figure out a little bit better way of doing it. But for right now, that's all I got. So the car's all back together. I drove it a couple times. Uh, one of the things that I noticed that I did wrong was you see this positive cable. I have it looped back behind the throttle body or the intercooler piping for the throttle body. Sorry, I'll reach down and touch it. I'm talking about this, this cable right here. So if you follow it with your eyes, it has a blue connector on it down there. So that's where I had initially routed it. Um, it's it's been very problematic going that way. I'm actually going to have to take some of the intercooler piping off in order to get to this intercooler piping. As you can see, that that clamp doesn't allow me to get to this one, uh, or this doesn't allow me to get to that clamp, and it'd just be a pain. So I'm going to actually have to take out the battery, take off the intercooler piping coming from the turbo, at least at this joint. Maybe it'll move out of the way enough then loosen that hopefully i can take this off and get it back on it's pretty hard mounted so and i have the bumper on i can't just stick my hand underneath the front of the car right there and, and mess with it like i did before so i'm hoping for the best here but i'm gonna reroute that power cable instead of going behind back here i'm gonna actually have it go this way in front of um and hope for the best hopefully i don't have to take off the the radiator the top radiator line uh, so what it's doing why I'm doing all this is you can see down here you can see the shifter weight on the shifter right here so this shifter weight just keeps just keeps hitting stuff so in I backed the car I initially found this problem I backed the car out of the driveway go to take off for my inaugural run and it won't go in the the to first, third, or fifth gear. It won't go any to any of the uh, the high gears or the up gears, whatever you want to call them, on the shifter because that weight actually comes like really close. It actually makes contact with the intercooler piping. So that's how tight it is down there. Uh, nothing against PRL. I mean, they they did what they could with the room that they had. I am pretty amazed with how tight everything fits in and nothing really sounded rattly or like it's hitting yet or anything like that but the shifter weight does make contact with intercooler piping so what was happening was that that power wire was actually down down further than this it was hanging way down here 
And when I went to try to put it into uh, first, third, or fifth, it, it was smashing the, the power wire in between the shifter weight and the intercooler piping. So it wasn't allowing it to go into gear and obviously smashing your main power wire from your battery to your starter is extremely problematic. <clears throat> if it gets through that casing, then you're just gonna burn your car down. So what I did in the meantime, just to be able to drive it is I pulled it up here and I kind of zip tied it to the blow off valve <clears throat> housing or piping just right across here just to get it out of the way so I could drive the car. It was, uh, I think, 1.30 in the morning when I was doing this for the inaugural run and to get the, the first the, the first data log for the tuner that I'm going through, I'm going through an e-tune. Uh, so it was like 1.30 in the morning, something like that. So I just zip-tied it out of the way. Well, what I noticed today is I'd put it in reverse and then it would kind of hang up getting out of reverse. Same exact problem. Uh, just way further down. It's back here back by where the Can't see it. Sorry back here by where the the radiator hose comes The shifter actually comes up quite a ways and goes backwards to go into To reverse and then when I was trying to get it out of reverse because it had come up quite a ways It was same exact thing. It was hanging up or interfering with this power wire right here so the easiest way to alleviate all this is just to run it in front instead of behind, uh, tie it up or get it out of the way somewhere where it's not gonna keep making contact with that shifter. Last thing I wanna do is create an electrical fire underneath my hood. So that's something that I did wrong. Uh, definitely, if I could suggest anything when you're hooking all this up, have your power wire more towards your radiator, more towards the front of your car definitely have it in, thr in front of your throttle body uh, tubing. So I got some stuff unbolted and out of the way so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Here's the weight for the transmission sh shift linkage. As you can tell right there, it actually does make contact. So not really sure how that's going to end up. I mean, right now, that that part of the shift linkage that it's making contact with really isn't important. And right now, it's making contact with the the clamp and not the actual pipe. So I could move the the clamp, but it's a lot cheaper and a lot easier to replace the clamp than it is that intercooler piping. So I'm actually going to leave it there. Uh, so it can make contact all at once if it ends up messing up the clamp, which I highly doubt, but if it ends up messing up the clamp, that's fine, that's easy. Uh, hopefully it doesn't mess up the shift linkage too much over time. But, so as you can see back there now, I don't have a, a power cable uh, coming from the battery to the starter anymore because I moved it up front in front of everything. It doesn't seem to be kinked real bad or anything. It does make contact with the loosely with the intercooler piping. Um, I think that I might, depending on how this looks once I kind of get the battery back in, I might end up zip tying it to the the fan shroud if I can find something good enough to zip tie it to. I want it to be sturdy. I don't want to break anything. But as you can see, there's already a wire. That's the fan control wire. There's already a wire kind of zip tied to it. Well, not zip tied, but secured to the shroud. So I don't know yet. Uh, I'll have to look at it and I'll have to see how much play there is once I get the battery in. The last thing I'm gonna do is uh, do this all over again, unless I absolutely have to. So I'll get the battery in if I can fit my hand down there. If it, if it seems that I'm gonna be problematic, then I'll zip tie it up. If it's not gonna be problematic, uh, then, then I won't. If obviously if it's gonna be problematic and I can't fit my hand down in there then at least I can mock up the cable say see if they're gonna fit like that and then I will uh, take everything back out one more time and zip tie it up to get to that uh, I did leave this piping obviously took off the blow-off valve and then took off the uh, the elbow we'll see how big of a pain that elbow is gonna be to get back on 
no clue. So, wish me luck. So I got the elbow on for the throttle body, and in doing so, this got the intercooler piping from the battery tray got even closer. You can tell how beat up it's getting already. I think most of that is just from the install, but you can see how close that is, and I'm just not comfortable with it being that close. I mean, it, it's going to beat up that intercooler piping, and I really don't want to have to go back to PRL and pay more money for a piece of intercooler piping because it got beat up by this battery tray especially i'll bring it out a little bit so this bracket no idea what it going to i still have the original bolts but no idea what this bracket actually went to maybe it had something to do with the the power cable because there is a connector on here that looks like it slides into a bracket um i don't have that bracket whatever so what i'm probably going to end up doing if i can get down to it I need to clean up that ground anyway. So I'm going to take the battery tray out and I'm going to chop that section off. I just, I don't want it beating up the intercooler piping and it's going to with, with that being solid to the frame of the car, the intercooler piping being on the engine, which is mounted to rubber to the car, it's going to vibrate back and forth. It's going to end up beating up that piping and possibly putting a hole in it. So then I'm going to have to rip it all off and either repair it or replace it so to prevent that i hate to do it i hate to cut stuff off of the car but uh i feel that that bracket i'm not using it it's never going back to naturally aspirated so whatever it was for probably for that battery cable i don't know um but i don't need it anymore so it's coming off for those who care this is what i did so there are four bolts holding this battery tray in if you haven't taken it out before I had not up until this day. So there's two up top, two underneath. And as you can see, you don't have to take the bolts out all the way, you just have to loosen them. So anyway, this sat in the car about like that. This was hanging off the edge. I just cut it off from underneath. I used my die grinder and just lightly touch the edges. I mean, it's a little rough, but it's nothing that's going to slice me open. Uh, I'm going to hit that up with a little bit of paint and then get this back in. And then I'll show you how, how much room I have after that's off. Okay, I just wanted to do a quick video real quick. Sorry, let me get this reservoir cap out of the way. I wanted to do a quick video real quick and just, uh, just show some of the gears that going through gear and how close they all come and what the shifter doing in what gear. So I got my daughter helping me. Alright, first gear. So that's first gear. Goes right up again. Second. Second go all the way back. Third. Third comes up again. Gets real close to intercooler. Fourth. I'll go back again. Fifth. Car's not moving, so a little hard to get into gear. Nothing's turning. So again, up sixth. There's sixth. Okay, now reverse. Now, try to see if I can get that coming out of reverse. Sorry, guys. Not easy to get into tight places. You'll see it come down. See how, see how high it went? That's what was hanging up. It was, uh, it's really close to that radiator hose. I'm glad it doesn't touch, but uh, that's where it was hanging up on the power cable even after I got it out of the way from smashing in between the intercooler piping. Okay, go ahead and go to neutral. See how it drops down. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going forward, dropping down, and making contact. And you can see it, it's really close to that that other intercooler piping in the neutral position but it's not touching can you jump wiggle it back and forth to neutral see if it does anything so in neutral it goes up and down it's not making contact it's far enough away um so just be cognizant of that i i think i got lucky when i put that intercooler piping in there i didn't even think of that so if that would have been making contact rubbing up and down i would have had to pull the front the bumper off and readjusted all the intercooler piping so uh, i highly suggest you at least give it a try 
um, before you button everything up. Once you get the intercooler piping in place, give it a try. Give the shifter a try back and forth. See if you're going to make contact with anything. Thanks. Back in here. I showed you that, but power cable's out of the way. Uh, I zip tied it up, but then because once you zip tie it, it pretty much holds this cable here. Uh, getting the battery in there is going to be next to impossible. So cut the zip tie. I'll get the battery in there. See what happens. Just wanted to show. Let me shed some light on this. Just want to show the uh, difference in fitment now. So without that bracket there. I mean, there's room for days. I hit it up with some black paint because where I scratched it all up, getting it in, putting it in. Never mind that coolant. It's just from the uh, reservoir cap hose. I left that in here when I took the reservoir out. So I did uh, put some paint on it just to try to prevent it from rusting. Back here, this section. Put the light down. This section, I can almost get my fingernail, the tip of my finger in there. So it has some room. Not a whole lot, but it has some. Not too worried about that section. Uh, kind of need that bracket. That's what holds the battery down. That's what the long little rod that has the, the L-bend in it hooks into. So kind of need that. You see that this... This intercooler pipe being torqued over quite a bit, more than I'd like it to be, but it is what it is. That's a reflection, not a crimp in the pipe or in the silicone. So yeah, uh, I don't regret my decision on cutting that bracket out. Now I got plenty of room, it's not going to rub, it's not going to damage the intercooler piping. Okay, got everything back in, power wire is now away from that. I ended up just zip tying right there to the bottom of the filler neck, right there, to the filler neck, we'll see. That's bolted in place and there's a hose clamp on the hose, so it should be okay. Uh, but that keeps it out of the way, everything's out of the way, brackets cut off, no more contact with intercooler piping so I think this finishes the install video um, I'm gonna do a little preamble so you'll see that at the beginning uh, I will say that if you made it this far through the video thank you very much for the support I really appreciate that if you made it this far then you're probably putting this on yourself or just doing research to see if you can put it on yourself or not I'll go into all that in the preamble but Again, thank you very much. If you got any help out of any of this video, please give me a like, throw a comment. Um, just try to keep them positive, guys. I, I did this 100% for the car community. Um, just in case you're, you're doing this and you run into any hiccups, maybe something in the video might show you a way that I did it and might give you either help doing it if you want to do it the way I did or give you another idea or another another look at how to accomplish getting this in or whatever whatever problem you're running into so uh short of running into any major problems uh this will conclude the install i will go i will do a whole video on on how i like the kit and everything i think about the kit once i've gotten it tuned and had time to uh to test it and, and see if I really like it, see if see if all the hype is worth it, which so far I, I think it's gonna be great. I will say that I was driving uh, just under, there's really no boost on keeping it under 4,000 RPMs. I'm only on my second uh, rewrite of the tune. So only a couple data logs so far. There is this weird noise, man, and, and I hope it's a normal noise. It's coming from the turbo or coming from boost. It, it gets louder as the RPMs go up, but it almost sounds like electrical interference into the stereo speakers, but it's definitely not coming from the stereo. It's coming from under the hood. So if you've ever hooked up an auxiliary jack into your car and plugged your phone in like into that powder, the power, that high pitch 
uh, almost electrical uh, interference noise that you get. That's kind of what I'm hearing. Jeez, I, I hope it's normal. I hope that everything's okay. I hope like when I loosen all the bolts and reclock the turbo and did all that, that when I clocked it, when I tighten them all down, that all that's fine. I, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm praying that the turbo actually getting oil through the oil feed line, which I wouldn't understand why it wasn't. It's, it's a direct line and I'm getting pressure at the switch, which is at the back of the connector, but uh, it's nerve wracking. I can tell you that much. It's very nerve wracking paying five grand for something and putting it in and, and hoping that it's all going well and it's not gonna detonate. <laughs> um, so like I said, if you found this video helpful, please give me a like, throw me a comment, what, what you thought, what you found helpful, uh, and good luck on your builds, guys. I, I love all the car community. I love all the people in it. I love all the cars. If I could help and give back in any way, this is my way. Uh, 8civic.com uh, has, has helped me tremendously through uh, all of my build, whether it be wiring that, the uh, boost controller directly into the ECU, or showing me how to do the uh, intake air temperature sensor. And I mean, the, the car community and the civic community and the true Honda enthusiasts are just great. Thank you guys. I appreciate all your help. Hopefully this helps somebody. If you're in the Colorado and Colorado Springs area, make sure you go on Facebook and, and go on to become a member of Colorado Springs Honda Enthusiasts. We meet up. There's, there's a group of five or ten of us that, that meet up all the time. So go ahead and go on there and, and become a member and start coming out to the meets. But thank you very much, guys. I, I appreciate all the help.